Good morning. Good morning. We have a nice intimate group here today. It's nice to feel together. Welcome. <clears throat> Welcome to All Faiths Unitarian Congregation. My name is Bob Moore, and I'll be leading our service today. This is a special place. <clears throat> here you will find a diverse and inclusive spiritual community where we welcome people of many beliefs. You can bring your whole self, your questioning mind, your full identity, and your expansive heart. We have more than one way of experiencing the world and understanding the sacred. And no matter who you are, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, and no matter whom you love, you're truly welcomed here. At all faiths, we are each other's keepers. Do we have any new faces visiting for the first or second time today? If you don't mind, please raise your hand. We got some in the back. Great. Welcome. We're glad you're here today. I hope you feel welcomed. Um, and if you would like to know more about All Faiths, you can please see Rosalie Kuhn or one of our greeters in our membership corner, which is just behind the folding doors here. Or you can visit our website. Uh, and if you're online, uh, this might be your, your ticket um, at allfaithsuu.org. Um, there are a number of announcements on the back of your program. Please take a look at those, but I'm going to just call out a couple of them. First of all, this Tuesday, the Life Celebration uh, meeting is taking place. There's, it's uh, a 6 p.m. sign-in for a 6.30 start. The meeting is at UUCFM on Shire Lane off of Daniels Parkway, so I hope to see a large turnout for that. Um, also, next Sunday, our Heart for the Homeless team is collecting insect repellent for um, folks who are homeless, who uh, are out in the elements and could use that help. So please bring repellents to help those who are vulnerable in our community. Um, and one last quick one to call out. We have a newcomers class that did not make it on the announcement list, but it's coming uh, Saturday, June 1st, it's 10 to noon here. Um, and so if you're new uh, or if you want a refresher on uh, All Face and the Unitarian Universalist tradition, please come. Uh, there's a sign up sheet on the uh, bulletin board in the back room there. So uh, sign up for that if you don't mind. Um, so with that, Carlos. Greetings, I'm Carlos Garcia, your director of music. Today we'll be using our gray hymnals where you'll find your songs number 361 and 123 in the gray hymnals. Right now I ask you to please rise in body and or spirit as we sing our opening hymn number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your ears to the song. Open your ears to the song. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Don't be afraid of some change. Don't be afraid of some change. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. So as Carol Heilsberg comes forward to light the chalice, please join me in reciting. <clears throat> Let the cares of the day follow. Oh, we have a different one. As this chalice is Oh, I started one line too uh, ahead. <laughs> I'm way ahead of my time. <clears throat> as the chalice is lit, let us come together into the sacred space we have created. 
Let the cares of the day fall away and know that here is a place for quiet reflection, for a pause in our lives, for breathing into our true selves. Let what is said and felt here add richness to the dimensions of our lives and spiritual practices. We are strong together in community. We share the experience of being human. Let the warmth of the chalice lit during time together connect us and carry us into the world. Good morning, all faiths. Oh, yes, very strong. It's good to see you all here this morning. And like Bob said, it's a little scarce. Feel free to move up if you want to. We understand that our snowbirds and those who visit us when it is um, very, very cold where they live have gone back home to the warmth and left us here with extreme heat. <laughs> But we are still glad to be here. My name is Alberita Johnson, and I'm the minister here. And right now, I would like to invite you up as we share our joys, sorrows, and gratitude. Please line up right here if you would like, and you can use this microphone. Let me just get it on. OK. Good morning. I'm Carol Heilsberg. And first, I would like to express my gratitude to Carlos for suggesting that I try out the Southwest Florida Voices Chorus because it's wonderful. And our concert on June 8th, our director has put together a, a program of songs of love, hope, and doing what's best for the world, which we all need right now. Anyway, I have tickets for sale <laughs> to the dinner and show. Um, payment has to be by check or cash, so if you don't have it today, just let me know and I'll make sure to bring tickets for the next two Sundays to sell. Thank you and hope to see you all there. The delicious I, dinners catered by Famous Dave's. And I like this chalice for the concert that is coming up. I used to be the president of the Gay and Lesbian Chorus that she's referring to and I can tell you they are an outstanding bunch. You will not be disappointed when you go to hear them sing and enjoy the dinner. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Joy, sorrows, gratitude. Okay, well, I'll just like, oh, come on up. No one else is but you and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dottie. Good morning, I'm Dottie Mayall. Just a gratitude for the uh, team yesterday that did the plant sale. I see Giovanni here. Giovanni! Judy's probably home resting because she, oh, she's here. She's yes, here. She is. Judy. Man, that woman knows how to do it, put plants and work hard. It was brutal hot, let me tell you who else there was. Oh, Frank and Nicole, hey there. So thank you to everyone. The plant sale is still on today. There are some great outdoor and indoor plants for sale by donation, by the way. Gratitude. Thank you, Dottie, for reminding us all that we have beautiful plants for sale yesterday and today. Today is your last chance to get any. Anyone else? Well, I just want to light this final candle then for all of you who may have joys and sorrows and even gratitudes in your heart that you haven't come up and shared with us today. And for those of you who are visiting with us live stream, for the joys and sorrows and gratitudes you also are carrying, I light this, child, this candle for you all. May you be blessed. So take a moment now to come inside yourself and close your eyes, take a deep breath, and let's turn our minds and our hearts to today's service and contemplate our blessings.
And now you would rise in body and, and or soul as we sing number 123, Spirit of Life. for today. Our opening words for today is the form of a letter. A letter before sailing to America in the spring of 1850. This letter is written by Sarah Margaret Fuller, 1810 to 1850. Sometimes referred to as Margaret Fuller Osoli, Osoli. She was an American journalist, editor, critic, translator, and women's rights advocate, a Unitarian and associated with the American Transcendentalist Movement. Here is her letter. I am absurdly fearful, and various omens have combined to give me a dark feeling. I am become indeed a miserable coward for the sake of Angelino. I fear heat and cold, fear the voyage, fear biting poverty. I hope I shall not be forced to be as brave for him as I have been for myself, and that if I succeed to rear him, he will be neither a weak nor a bad man. But I love him too much. In case of mishap, however, I shall perish with my husband and my child, and we may be transferred to some happy estate. I have a vague expectation of some crisis. I know not what. But it has long seen that in the year 1850, I should stand on a plateau in the ascent of life, where I should be allowed to pause for a while and take more clear and commanding views than ever before. Yet my life proceeds as regularly that's the fates of a Greek tragedy, tragedy, and I can but accept the pages as they turn. Footnote. Margaret Fuller died in a shipwreck off Fire Island in 1850 with her husband and child on their return from Italy. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Shame no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the lies I'm 
not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance. Cause I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance. When I stand in your love. There's power that can break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your faith. Power in your faith. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. It's beautiful. Thank you, Carlos. This poem is by Rabbi Rachel Berenblatt. It's called Ready. And it starts with a short quote from Exodus 12:34. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading bowls wrapped in their cloaks upon their shoulders. You'll need to travel light. Take what you can carry, a book, a poem, a battered tin cup, your child strapped to your chest, clutching your necklace in one hot, possessive fist. So the dough isn't ready. So your heart isn't ready. You haven't said goodbye to the places where you hid as a child, to the friends who aren't interested in the journey, to the graves you've tended. But if you wait until you feel fully ready, you may never take the leap at all. An infinity is calling you forth out of this birth canal and into the future's wide expanse. Learn to improvise flat cakes without yeast. Learn to read new alphabets. Wear God like a cloak and stride forth with confidence. You won't know where you're going, but you have the words of our sages, the songs of our mothers, the inspiration wrapped in your kneading bowl. Trust that what you carry will sustain you and take the first step out the door. Time for reading? The hymn? Yes, hymn 318. Hymn number 318, we would be we one. Would be one.
to show to all a new community. We would be one in building for tomorrow, a nobler world than we have known today. We would be one in searching for that meaning which binds our hearts ourselves to greater service with love and just this strive to make us move. Okay, so we definitely are missing the chorus this morning, the choir. <laughs> But they'll be back with us again soon. Well, before I start my message, I want to share one more announcement that I did not see or hear in the bulletin. And that is, immediately after service, you all are invited to join us as we go back towards our door and we, we, we put our mezuzah back up. Mars de Galbo will share with us what it is, and why it is there, and how we came to have it in our possession. Okay, immediately after service. So let's not crowd around each other. Let's go over there and do this. Don't forget. All right, we'll block the door and won't let you out <laughs> until it is done. Okay, so here we go. Today we're going to talk about sacred fear. There is a strange fear associated with religion. Somehow, it encourages one to be a better person while simultaneously being scary. I don't know if that's encouraging at all, but that is the fact. So I'm going to run down a few things that may sound a little odd, a little scary about religion. Two weeks ago, we talked about the Nicene Creed and how it impacted the Christian world for generations, even with its many flaws. And last week, or maybe a little more than last week, I went to see a documentary about a mistranslation of the Revised Standard Bible that was written in 1946. This 1946 Bible went on to influence so many other Bibles. And, and because this important task was a group of men gathered together, just like the Nicene Creed, with the important task of translating the New Testament from the Greek language to English, ultimately creating a culture shift of anti-gay theology to explode. And October 7th, get scared, of this year, we have witnessed a war between two nations that are historically steeped in religion and religious piety. These two nations are thousands of miles away from America and yet, the United States is not simply watching or observing, but is very much involved. Additionally, the United States is deeply affected by the war, while she herself is suffering due to the rise of Christian and religious conservatism and fundamentalism and hate groups. In fact, I believe we might be witnessing an undeclared holy war right here in the United States. And now, continuing on, next month is Pride Month, and yes, there is conservative and religious outcry against the queer community, with many states, particularly Florida and the current legislature, basically shunning and attempting to shame the queer community, declaring war against corporations and institutions that openly support the queer community. While thousands are using the Bible, and other religious texts to justify hatred and unjust wars and laws. I continue. Our local and state government are at a standoff with our universities, our university students, and faculty. Should I continue with why there may be an undeclared holy war going on? 
Is there any wonder why there is a falling away from churches, religious organizations, even religious occupation has faltered? And that is across the board. I, my friends, believe it is the fear is the root, fear. And that perhaps what I call sacred fear can impede the usual response to fear. We know the usual response, freeze, flight, or fight. It seems like fear has stirred up just one, and that is that urge to fight, to declare war. Not a good thing at all. And here we are in the midst of the fight and or flight reaction. Even some people feel if I just do nothing, all will be well. No. People have turned away. People have taken flight from the very places that can help them. <laughs> so this morning, I want to talk about what I call the petals, petals like a flower. The petals of liberalism, petals of sacred fear, sacred fear, and the liberalism that it upholds. So first, let me talk about why holy wars. What in the world are they? They are wars waged in support of religious causes. It appears that conservatism and or fundamentalism may be a foundation for holy wars. Both conservatives and fundamentalists can be dangerous and scary. We find them swimming about in the waters of so-called traditional values and ideas with an opposition to change or innovation and against anyone that does not embrace those very same traditions. Karen Armstrong, one of my favorite authors, wrote in The Battle for God, A History of Fundamentalism. She wrote about the dangers of fundamental, fundamentalism, implying that it is a form of a religion, especially Islam, and the Protestant Christianity that upholds belief in, this is it, the strict, literal interpretation of scripture and other texts. Literal interpretation. This includes their leadership fearing that if not police, the adherents might have an independent thought or action that is contrary to the scriptures. Additionally, the ones looked to for guidance to support when you have questions and these organizations and religion. These spiritual leaderships within conservatism and fundamentalism are often the leaders themselves who are purporting these ideologies. So where do they go? They have nowhere. So these people, these leaders, have a way of keeping a stronghold on their adherents. It's fear. In fact, Bobby Azarian, a PhD cognitive neuroscientist and science writer, wrote in Psychology Today. He titled his article, How Religious Fundamentalism Hijacks the Brain. And he cautions one, quote, in moderation, religious and spiritual practices can be, a gr be great for a person's life and mental well-being. But Religious fundamentalism refers to the belief in the absolute authority of a religious text and or its leaders. It is never good for an individual. This is primarily because fundamentalism discourages any logical reasoning or scientific evidence that challenges its scriptures, making it inherently maladaptive. And he later goes on to say, listen to this, calling fundamentalism a parasite, a parasite saying, a parasite does not usually kill the host. Instead, it inhabits the host, as it is critical, critically dependent upon the host for survival. It feeds off the host and changes its behavior in many ways that benefit the parasite's own existence. By understanding how fundamentalist theologies function and are represented in the brain using this analogy, we can begin to understand how to inoculate against them and potentially 
how to rehabilitate someone who has undergone ideological brainwashing. In other words, what is that? A reduction in one's ability to think critically or independently, end quote. This parasite analogy is similar to the phenomenon we talked about in the past called groupthink. I think some of you may remember. Groupthink is the practice of thinking or making decisions as a group in a way that discourages creativity or individual responsibility. The philosopher and cognitive scientist Daniel Dennett gives the descriptions of the pearls of groupthink regarding fundamentalism, saying, there are moderate versions of Christianity and Islam that promote qualities like a sense of community and a moral code that fosters ethical behavior. These ideas can be beneficial to the host organism. At the same time, they are harmful variants of Islam and Christianity, specifically the rigid fundamentalist versions that cause the host mind to process information in a biased way. Think irrationally and become delusional. Delusional. This I know, it may sound unbelievable, but it's true. Many fundamentalists, particularly Christians, are science deniers. Denial of science. What is that? Well, it's basically the denial of objective truth and tangible evidence. In other words, the denial of reality. Not only does fundamentalism promote delusional thinking, it also discourages followers from exposing themselves to any different ideas, thus protecting the delusion. The question is, what is the motiv motivating factor? What motivates one to actually lean in to delusionism? Well, in my opinion, there may be many, but the most essential motivator is not love, although that is the claim. Instead, it is fear. Let me give you a really simple explanation. If you have to scare me into believing what you think, I don't know if I want to be scared with you. Delusional. If I fear this, then I must yield to it. No. Fear, that if one does not believe, this is the thought. Fear, that if one does not believe and accept the ideologies and practices, then one is not safe. And all those who do believe, accept, etc., are safe. Fear, the producer of the urges. Again, fight, flight, freeze. It is under these circumstances that I believe us liberals have the upper hand. As Unitarian Universalists, we swim in the waters of liberalism. You see, my friends, Unitarian Universalism, ours is a sacred fear, but not the kind of sacred fear associated with gods, goddesses, and little gods. Research indicates, according to theological liberalism, that our sacred fear is based on religious liberalism as a form of religious thought that emphasizes inquiry and interpretation based on norms other than traditional authority. You see, ours is a faith, a religion of many varying beliefs regarding the great mysteries of creation and our universe. It is indeed sacred. Ours is not angry nor filled with fear of sin, fear of death, fear of hell. Ours, instead, is an ever-widening circle opening to all with love at its center. Our Article II revisions that are about to be voted on, final revisions, about to be voted on at the Unitarian Universalist Association General Assembly next month, they have the values broken up into six like a beautiful flower. Think of these six petals with love at the center that represents our covenant with the Unitarian Universalist Association, with the member congregations, and with one another right here. Within these revisions, we find nothing to fear. Yes, fear indeed can be a motivator. It signals that something is important or challenging. It pushes us to take action and overcome obstacles. 
The psychological response to fear, including the release of adrenaline, enhances focus and creates a sense of urgency, and we become scared. Scared. It's a scared fear. Not sacred fear. A sacred fear that will create a sense of peace, love, and joy. I want you to imagine really quickly what it would feel like being embraced by the feelings of justice, interdependence, where we lean on each other, pluralism, where we accept all, equity, where we are fair and balanced, generosity, where we lend and give without thinking who's going to return it, and transformation, not being afraid of change. This is what we liberals embrace ourselves in. Our six petals, again, I'm going to run it through really fast. Justice, interdependence, pluralism, equity, generosity, and transformation. Those are the six. And then, right at the center of that beautiful flower, it is as if you slipped into a pool of love and acceptance. That is the center of ours, of our Unitarian Universalist faith. Liberalism, my friends, upholds sacredness as no other. We Unitarian Universalists, we are poised to open our doors for all those who are seeking to get away from delusional thinking and fear of what might happen tomorrow instead of what is happening right now. Liberalism upholds that sacredness. It is flexible, yes, but yet fixed. Fixed on love, the greatest power there is. It inspires a sacred fear and an awesome respect for love while it brings peace and joy along with it. As we enter these doors every Sunday, it is written right in front of you on the wall as you enter, come, come, whoever you are. And we keep coming. Week after week, year after year, we show up. We keep coming to smell the flowers of love, to be free of fear, and experience the sacred fear of liberalism blooming in love. May it always be so. Amen. And Ashe. Here's to letting go of fear. Amen. Don't let go. <laughs> so it's time for our offertory and to make us generous and to start with some humor. Might be a stretch at humor, but I'll give it a shot here. I, and looking at some jokes about fear, today's theme, I learned a couple of things. Um, for example, the credo of the Flat Earth Society. I didn't know they had a credo, but they do. There's, there's nothing to fear but sphere itself. <laughs> And <clears throat> I did learn a little bit about world culture as well. Um, for example, did you know that in Iran, there's a widespread fear of spiders, but in Iraq, no phobia? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, for you time managers out there, you may want to be <clears throat> feeling some fear for the calendar, for its days are numbered. <laughs> As always, we appreciate your generous donations which support our dedicated staff, amazing staff, uh, beautiful facilities, inspiring services, our interesting activities, and social outreach at All Face. So um, we also invite visitors to place their completed visitors cards in the offertory baskets. Um, and if you're with us um, on the airwaves, you can mail your checks or visit our website at allfaceuu.org. So our offering will now be taken.
Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know who you are to me. They don't know the life with you and me. They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know who you are to me. They don't know how you love me so. They don't know the life with you and me. Why should I fear when I have you surrounded by your love, your everlasting love? Why should I care what people say? They don't know what you mean to me. They don't know who you are to me. They don't know how you love me so. They don't know the life with you and me. Our closing words for today. It's called to pass the peace. To pass the peace is a revolutionary act. It means to trust the outsider that we may fear, to wish well those who have hurt us, and to forgive at last ourselves. To offer the blessing to those around you is to love your neighbor and yourself and to be at peace. May it be so. Every anxious thought that steals my breath is a heavy weight upon my chest as I lie awake and wonder what the future will hold help me to remember that you're in control you're my courage when I worry in the dead of night you're my strength when I'm not strong enough to win the fight you are greater than this battle raging in my mind. I will cross the door. I will fear no more. I will lift my eyes. I will lift my cares. Lay them in your hands. I'll leave them there. When the winds and waves are coming, you shelter me. Even though I'm in the storm, the storm is not in me. You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. 
You're my strength when I'm not brand enough to win the fight. You are greater than the battle raging in my mind. I will cross the door. I will fear no more. I will fear no more. I will fear no more. You're my courage when I worry in the dead of night. You're my strength when I'm not strong enough to win the fight. You are greater than the battle raging in my mind. I will cross the door. I will fear no more. 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 No more fear, no more fear. Thank you, Albie, for your message today. Uh, let's all take it to heart and find ways to bring more sanity out into the world. Um, and Carlos, thank you for the music. You're kind spirit always comes through in a very fine way. Um, thank you to Sharon on our camera, to Brad on sound, and to all the others who make the service and our congregation run smoothly. Um, it's good to be connected in whatever way we can. And uh, as Carol comes forward to extinguish our service, let's recite our closing words. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and out into the world. So please join uh, in the back room for coffee, cookies, and conversations. Thanks for your time. Okay.